Hello, everybody. Welcome to Live at Five. I'm Beth Stevens. And I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. We have two guests you today. Have a double dose. Double today. dose. We have Alexandra Socha <laughs> and Joshua Boone from Actually yes. at MTC. Really very interesting, very poignant. Yes. Very wonderful topical actors. play. Two wonderful we actors. We have some good questions out there. Oh, yeah. But we have some news first. We do. Yes. Um, so the Grammy nominations were announced this morning, and only three Broadway cast recordings were nominated for Grammy Awards. They are Come From Away, Dear Evan Hansen, and Hello, Dolly. Uh, typically, this is a category where they can fill it up with five, and they could have filled it up with five this year. But these are the three that they have chosen, all fantastic cast recordings. Also, Ben Platt is a Grammy nominee alongside his Dear Evan Hansen composers, Benj Pasek and Justin Paul. And Bette Midler was nominated for as a vocalist for the Hello, Dolly! revival album. And the 60th annual Grammy Awards will happen on January 28th on CBS. Amazing. Yeah. Well, this is a solo show I really liked a lot last year. It's Anna DeBeer Smith's acclaimed play, Notes from the Field, which was done at Second Stage. Right. It's being adapted for HBO. I mean, she is amazing. Yeah. And she plays many different characters in this. And uh, Christy Zay is the director of the HBO uh, adaptation. And this is what she calls the school to prison pipeline. Right. And she, of course, if you know Anna DeVere Smith, she's like a documentary. And she goes mm -hmm. in the field, literally, and she interviews a bunch of people, and then she embodies them during the solo show. So uh, this ran from October through December last year at Second Stage. There were 19 roles that Anna I was going to say, Smith do you played. think with the HBO TV adaption, adaptation, she's going to play all 19 roles? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, this will debut on HBO on February 24th, 2018. And I will give you my I can't wait. My HBO I'm very password. excited. Yes, let yeah. me, let me log in I'll share with to you. your HBO now. <laughs> um, Beth Malone, who we all love, she is returning to the unsinkable Molly Brown in a roundabout theater company private reading um so that's all it is right now so it we is can't just go a, it is we can't go to it nobody can go to it. it's a private reading um but it, there's some interesting stuff about this version of it um it is directed by kathleen marshall and it features an adapted book by dick scanlon um this um beth malone had done this version of it before at the muni in st louis um in a, I think earlier this summer, I believe is when she did it, um, with with that book and with Kathleen Marshall directing. There's no word yet on any kind of Broadway production or anything like that, but it's you know it's exciting to see that Beth Malone is doing it again. So maybe uh, maybe in the near future we'll see some more of it. Maybe we'll actually get to go. Maybe it won't be so private. <laughs> right. Maybe it won't be so private. So you know how there are these shows in London. You're like that's coming to Broadway because yes. that's fancy. Well, you're very good at this. Yes, this is your. I'm, I'm not going to give you my British accent because that's <laughs> offensive. Uh, Jez Butterworth, the ferryman, has been playing in the West End. This is just one of those shows where you're like, mm, when mm -hmm. is it coming? When Super is it coming? But that there. is not what I have to tell you. What I have to tell you is it has a new cast. Rosalie Craig, Owen McDonald, and Justin Edwards will begin on January 8th. And this is directed by Sam Mendes. Mm -hmm. Very fancy. It began in June at the Gielgud Theater. And it's supposed to end at the Gielgud Theater on May 19th. Now, we'll see if it gets extended or right. it crosses or the it, pond, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. comes on over to us. There are also some really interesting things on the site, broadway.com, that you can check out right now. Um, we had some photos um, from Meteor Shower, which opens tomorrow night. You can see the cast in those production photos. We also got more production photos of Uma Thurman in The Parisian Woman, which I'm seeing this evening, which and I, I can't saw last wait. Evening. Um, so you can see all of those. Uh, that opens on the 30th in a couple of days. Um, we have a video of Annalie Ashford singing Wonderful as part of the Out of Oz video. Former Glinda. Yes, Tony the former winner. Glinda. Yeah. Broadway.com audience choice award winner. The you want me to stop fifth, talking? No, it's right. no please. It's sing fine. all of Anna's, <laughs> Annalise's praises. Uh, the fifth episode of Getting Cheeky uh, backstage, backstage at SpongeBob SquarePants is up on the site right now That's with Lily Cooper. That's a great Cooper. one because you get to see the behind the scenes yes. of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. She did a great job of showing what that looks yes. like. And so it's super cool. And Ben Platt stopped by The Ellen Show to talk about finishing up at Dear Evan Hansen and his upcoming solo album. All very interesting stuff. And he talks about Beyonce. So, of course, he of talks course about he Beyonce. Does. Yeah. And Beyonce cooks backstage at SpongeBob. Just watch it. You'll understand. You'll understand. <laughs> but that's so, it for the news. That's yes. It for me. So, stay with us. We'll be right back with Alexandra Socha and Joshua Boone.
me outside, always looking in. Will I ever be more than I've always been? Cause I'm tap, tap, tapping on the glass. I'm waving through a window. These artists will come together for only one thing. It's not a concert. It's not an award show. It's SpongeBob the Musical on Broadway. Ben Brantley of the New York Times calls the Book of Mormon the best musical of this century. This was my fourth time seeing it, and they still had me at Hello, winner of nine Tony Awards, including Best Musical. The Book of Mormon on Broadway. Broadway's Come From Away is a Best Musical winner all across North America. This stirring and inspiring musical takes you to a place you never want to leave. Celebrate the best of humankind and the best in all of us at Come From Away, the remarkable true story of the small town that welcomed the world. Welcome back to Live at Five. I'm Beth Stevens, and I'm here with two guests, Alexandra Socha and Joshua Boone from Actually at MTC. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Love ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. Absolutely. How are you guys doing? Great. This show keeps extending. It's yeah. gen it's it's people want to see this show. I yeah. think so. It I seems guess like it. I don't know. <laughs> it's a hit. It's a hit. It's, it's very uh very topical, you know, if mm -hmm. you will. Um I would say people definitely want to see it. It speaks to I mean it's always been topical for that matter, you know. It's which is unfortunate, but Let's give people a taste of what it's about before we talk about how topical it is. Oh, because yeah, there call. was literally a think piece in the New York Times today that included actually. Oh, really? So what is actually? Um, it deals with two college students, Tom and Amber, and it and a night that they experienced together, uh, and all of the questions that they have after it. And it ma it mainly deals with sexual consent, and it takes it sort of takes these. Um, uh, you know, campus sexual assault stories that we hear about all the time, but really digs into every single tiny little piece of it in a way that we maybe haven't heard or read in the news before. And the structure of it is is interesting because you really are doing monologues mostly, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you're, you're both on stage. Eighty-five percent of it, yeah, definitely. Eighty-five percent, really. A lot of direct address um, to the art. Well, not yeah, direct address in the sense of we're sharing our stories to people who we would consider our best friends, you know, mm -hmm. pleading our case or explaining what we felt went down yeah. and the things we learned during the moment and prior to the moment and uh, or because of the moment for that matter. Mm. And uh, it's, 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 it's very gray, you know. People want answers these days and our show doesn't give you an answer, you know. It forces you to look at yourself and see these people and make a decision that way, you know. How yeah. do you feel about this? What are your opinions on this? Or not be able to make a decision because you now can see the full feel, picture. You can, you can see, yes, exactly. And it really, but it is, it's, it, it, we've talked about it in a way, it is sort of like two one-person shows happening simultaneously. Um, but you're each giving your perspective. Yes, yeah. and a lot of the time we're not even talking about the same thing or the same moment. Uh, so, you know, learning right, lines was, said she learning said. lines yeah, was, no, 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 was no, really no. difficult. It was more traumatic than that. There were mm -hmm. like, yeah, because like whenever, whatever my cue is from him, whatever he is saying has nothing to do with what I'm about to say. Yeah. So, you so you can't really help each other out on stage as performers well, maybe a little bit? Well, no. No, but we've However, made it work. <laughs> she's she's had my back a couple times, you know, definitely <laughs> twice. Looked out for me big time. Figured it out. And, we figured um, it out. Yeah, yeah. So it's not impossible. That's good to yeah. hear. You got to pretty much know the whole show in order for that to happen. Like <laughs> everybody's lines, every single word for that matter. But it's, it's been cool. It's been cool. And I love this dynamic in the story, you know the black man, white woman, mm -hmm. you know, it speaks to larger issues in the country other than just consensual sex. Mm -hmm, right. And uh, to not be able to make a decision, you know, hopefully that trans translates and transfers to headlines we see in America, you know, when it comes to, to black man and white anything for that matter. I feel like, you know, the black man is, is, is so, is pegged guilty so much of the time before we even, you know, hear the details of an event. And mm -hmm. I feel like this story speaks to that in a, in a greater way than, than just consensual sex, which I think mm -hmm. is really cool. So Right, it paints a much larger picture. Yeah. It's got a lot of themes going on. Absolutely. And it really shows the details, the humanity. Yeah. It yes. really shows you who these people are as people, so you can understand it from their point of view. So you've yeah. seen That's it. That's what makes it so difficult. Absolutely. So you've seen it? Did you I get to seen see it? actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's my question for you guys. Yeah. 
You guys are both musical theater performers. <laughs> yeah. Who just happened to be in this play off Broadway. Mm. <laughs> but you both made your Broadway debuts in musicals. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's yes, talk about that did. for just a second. We'll get back to actually. Don't worry. No, no, no. no fine. But I'm really, like, I find that interesting just in terms of having that opportunity to do something mm -hmm. dramatic mm -hmm. and also knowing that your background is music. Yeah, I, well, I'll, I'll say that my. I was more, my background isn't necessarily music. Music came in later. But you made your Broadway debut in music. But I made my Broadway debut in a musical, absolutely, which is, which is cool because this is it's all art, you know? It's, it's all storytelling, and I don't want to necessarily categorize it, but mm -hmm. yes, I made my debut in a musical, and it's a blessing, and I was fortunate to, to have It was gift. Holler If You... Holler If You Hear Me. Yeah, <laughs> short-lived, but an amazing time. You know, right, let me let you know right now. <laughs> Holla if you hear me was off the hook. I don't care what anybody else has to say. I had a good time. I love that. And show. he what can he can yeah. sing, and he'll be she like very sing. humble right, about it. Right, but like, right, <laughs> it's actually kind of annoying yeah, no. that he's as good as he is at all of the things. So you get to see all the other talents. It's not enough. I don't compare to her. I do Stam. not compare to this, not, this this lady this is right here. Yeah, we did contest. Like, we did right, this play. We did the play up at Williamstown this summer, and they do late night cabarets there. And um, yeah, and I know, like he he had been there the whole summer, and sort of nobody had any idea he could sing. And he I got know. up on stage in the final cabaret and opened his mouth, and everyone was like, "Oh, oh come right. on!" Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, I love okay. how you're embarrassing him. This is yeah, awesome. a little bit. She shut it down though. Like I may have sung I'm a little bit, him. but she shut the cabaret down. You know, <laughs> she was the highlight. They would structure the cabaret around no. you know when what position they wanted her to sing in, which I thought well, was Alexandra, beautiful. Obviously, you made your Broadway debut in Spring Awakening. Yeah, big. Ten years. That was a long time ago. How old were you? 18, 17? I don't want people to do math, so I'm, I'm not going to tell yeah. them. <laughs> you are you are a mere child. You are a child. <laughs> but that was a really big moment for you. Oh God, yeah, changed my whole life, changed my entire life. Um, yeah. I mean, it, they're very different experiences because you yeah. opened a show that w that opened on Broadway, didn't have a tryout. Yeah. It yeah. was just mm. like a fantastic right. cast. Holler I'm a fan of Holler. Come on. I'm just saying. Come on. But uh, and then Alexander, you came into a show that was already a huge hit and there yes. was that different kind of pressure. Oh, it was so crazy. I mean, I think I joined like a month after the Tonys, you know, so they had just won everything in the world and, you know, the audiences every, I think th the summer I joined, you know, the audiences every night were explosive and I sort of thought that that's just how Broadway that's was how Broadway all is. the yeah. time. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and then I sort of got the dose of reality of like, oh no, it's not everybody is obsessed with you every every single second not always um not always mm -hmm. uh so yeah it was i mean gosh that was huge and it was it, every moment of that was such an education it was such an education the first broadway show i saw also was spring awakening oh, yeah. really yeah absolutely look at this connection i loved it yeah <laughs> when you guys did this up at williamson when you did it actually up at williamson did you know it was going to have another life we did yeah. we did when we we knew when we auditioned that that was the plan and so so you really got to sort <laughs> of figure it out up there. They do. That's right. You never know. And this <laughs> that was the world. idea. But, and yes, the, and yes, we did have we did have some time. time to just kind of figure some things out and put it up at Williamstown, and then hopefully expand on those things when we brought it here to MTC. Yeah, which, which was, was cool. nice because as we, it's such a, it's such an intricate, complex, deep play that it, if we had, it would have been wonderful if we had. You know, if we had only done a Williamstown, great. But I think going, being up there, knowing we had another ch opportunity was really nice because it just felt like we could take our time f finding things. Mm -hmm. And because uh, Williamstown, the schedule is so crazy. Yeah, shout, out know, shout out to Williamstown! It's Festival. amazing. Let me tell you. But it's summer stock, so it's very. I mean, we were it's in rehearsal back. two weeks for this two-person, you know, monologue fest, mm -hmm. and. Um, <laughs> And so it was just nice to know that we were going to have another stab at it. It's always cool to know that because yeah. you always do things and they end and you're like, ah, oh, I wish that I had maybe done this or tried that or had this moment. And, you to and now you get it. to try it and you get to do that. Did you, what are some of the responses that audiences have had? Oh, my God. <laughs> they run saying, the we, Do you have talkbacks and stuff? Do you get to actually talk to We've the audience? We had a couple... Yeah, we had, we had a, a student good. matinee last week that wow. was incredible. Um, yeah. People have all sorts of opinions. Uh, I bet. They yeah. like to it's share. Great. They love to share them mm -hmm. with us, um, and they want answers from us, it, which I think is interesting. They, a lot of times they want 
They want answers that we can't give them. Mm -hmm. um, like they think if they ask us as an actor, we'll give them the answer, and we're like, nope. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's not how it works. I love it though. I, I love that aspect great. of it. You know, because when you know that people are leaving the theater still thinking about what they just saw, mm -hmm. and, and you know, having conversations with themselves, with other people, and wanting to have dialogue with us too, it's, it's been amazing. We had a great talk back at Williamstown. We've had a couple here. The student, mat student matinee was off the hook, and it's just it's it's been a it's been a great experience. You know. Um, hearing some of the positive sides of the conversation as well as the negative, to see yeah. the history of, of what people bring into the theater. You know, we had a nice experience in Williamstown where, you know, an, an older couple, they, they had some very negative views on what they considered rape to be. And then we just had to kind of bow out of the conversation <laughs> right. because yeah. it, it, we, we saw no progress. And happening. what you realize, what you start to realize is people's opinions on these characters and the story kind of has way more to do with them than the play. Right. Right. Like, it's, I sort it. of think it's impossible, even a little bit as an actor in this play, even I think director, player, like I don't, I think what she bring, what Anna Ziegler, our playwright, brings to light so well is that it's just sort of impossible to not have any sort of bias right. in in these stories and these situations. And mm. when people come in, they have all these preformed thoughts and opinions. They just bring in their baggage. They yeah. do. Everyone has yes. Everyone has their baggage, and so you don't know, you know, what that person has gone through or experienced, and and that's they're bringing that to what is happening in front of them and and that's so that's it, it's helped some of the some of the more negative things slide off a bit more because mm -hmm. you realize like this doesn't really have to do with me but this is like you a know? zeitgeist moment too this is unfortunately unfortunately happening but, in the paper every single yeah, day now yeah. and it wasn't the summer as much it's all i mean it has been sort of rolling yeah. as a as a topic for a long time now it has and i will say the one difference is i think the thing we're experiencing in the news every day is more with like men in positions of power, That's true. you know, yeah. using it in ways that they should know better. I think this deals with young Two college people students, yeah. and, and sort of, and it, and it deals with also like the process that is set up on campuses right now to deal with these and makes people really look at them in that way. And so I, I would say that that is the way in which it is different. Mm -hmm. um, but Again, it's essentially But it's, it's definitely it's a topic that's happening. The same. Yeah, we have some questions Let's from our them. Facebook Let's Live friends. <laughs> Let's see what they have to some say. Some good questions. There are some good Very questions. Good. Uh oh. Hello. Oh boy. Here we go. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Alec asks, "Any dream roles, either together or separately?" Let's start separately. Let's <laughs> start yeah. separately, and then can we can we dream up. Dream well, I keep saying, "What musical?" I keep being like, "What you musical are we going to do together?" Yeah, you, did, you have asked. Yeah. That. What musical are you going to do together? I don't know. I don't know en enough of them. <laughs> 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 well, I know your first musical. Yeah, how live you hear me? Oh. No, your oh. first musical ever. What was it? My first musical ever was that, that in. in high school. It was what was the name of it? It's the Christmas one with uh, Scrooge. A Christmas Carol? I don't know. Is well, there, are there different ones? I think no. It's, Scrooge is only yeah, I think in it, one it was story. okay. A, a Christmas Carol <laughs> was the first one. The first, There's and a I was in, I was in the Christmas ensemble. Carol. I was a toy soldier in that. That was my freshman year. Training. I don't know. See, maybe I it wasn't a Christmas Carol. Confused. Confused. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, forget that. The first one that <laughs> I had, the like, first one that I had a part? solo in, that yes. I had a part in, was My Fair Lady. Oh. I played oh, Freddy. I played Freddy. You know, on the street where you oh, live. Yeah. You know, Sing it. no, we're not. Sing we're not. It. We're not gonna. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> and your first musical I'll sing was with you. The King and I when I was five years old. So those work together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, the king and I—I definitely—it was community theater, and I definitely played a Siamese child, which is inappropriate, one thousand percent not okay. <laughs> but it happens. Uh, all it was place. 1995, so what can you? Uh, no, now people are going to do math. Don't people don't um, can't do math? <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, dream roles. What can we do together to? Oh, I dream don't roles. No, yeah. uh, honestly. I'm gonna put this out. Manifest Universe, yes. Jane Eyre in Jane Eyre the oh, musical. Yeah. That's my. That's I one of my. That yeah. is one of my favorite musicals in the whole world, and I know that not everybody is of that opinion. But I saw that musical when I was 11 years old, and I had seen Broadway shows. I had seen a lot of shows. 2001. That, oh, I'm sorry, doing that. Now we're doing math again. Mm, yeah. It's fine. Whatever. I'm 27. <laughs> 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 it's not a bad age. I don't but mind. I remember that show. That was a beautiful um, show. I was enchanted by every and moment of that. And did you and go I, and read the, the book I've read the that, book. I'm about to read. I, I decide I want to do a reread. I did get to meet Paul Gordon once and totally nerded out, fangirled over him after seeing Daddy Longlegs, which I also <laughs> loved. 
I just love his music. And yeah, I want to. So if anybody out there ever wants to do Jane Eyre the musical ever again. Jane Eyre the musical. I'm sure they do. I am, I am there. So that's, that's mine for me. Uh, it's not necessarily one. I just have things I want to do. Mm. You know, I, okay. I, I want to. I want to play Hamlet. I want to mm. do Othello. I see that. I want to do that. Boy Willie. Um, uh, I want to do Andy Stephen Atley Girgis play. <laughs> you know, and I guess I want to see. I, I recently saw um, uh, Ain't Too Proud at, out at Berkeley Rep. Mm. And in case I don't do it myself, I want to see a musical. And the show was amazing, by the way. Let me just say that the show was off the hook. This is a Temptations musical. Yeah, the Temptations musical. And it prompt w- watching my friends and watching the show and seeing the story, I wanted to hear, because we get, we get it from the Temptations perspective. Mm-hmm. I wanted the same story, but told from their wives and girlfriends' perspective. Yes. With, with them singing the tunes, the popular tunes, and doing the concerts. Ooh, I'm uh, loving this. Yeah, I, in case I don't write it myself, I want somebody else out there to, you know, <laughs> the, not, not, not just this story, that, not just though. this story, any story for that matter, you know, any story that, that has someone else who experienced the same thing, you know, just to show their side of the, the so mm. their side of what happened, yeah. you know, along with the music, along with, with mm. everything else that goes along with it. And even them maybe playing the dude roles or vice versa if the dudes play the women. You know, it's I wanna see I wanna see that. So, mm. so Hamlet. Yeah, Hamlet, Othello, Othello and then Boy the Willie, perspective. Stephen Adler, Gary's <laughs> wise perspective. Yeah. And then that. if you guys have any suggestions for, for what shows should what together. we should do together, shows that we yeah. should do together. We have to think on this. Pa- after actually. Yeah. After actually. Um, some other questions. Peyton's asking the best life advice you've ever been given. Uh, Look at that eye roll you got, Peyton. Oh, no, that wasn't an eye roll. <laughs> She's That's like, me. how much have I been given? <laughs> best life advice. It's hard to pick, uh, right? Yeah, it can be. Yeah. I feel like I've got a lot of bad life okay, advice. Okay, let's go. Let's <laughs> the bad advice. What's the worst advice you've been given? Oh, I, I can't. I don't think I listen to the bad advice. I think oh, I kind of oh, cipher it out and know that it's bad, or either I just don't care enough about it, so I just <laughs> disregard it until I need it. You know, which sucks, but you know you gotta learn the hard way sometimes. Uh, I guess some of the best advice I've been given: uh, preparation. You know, when it comes to just life in, in general. You know, as well as art, just to be prepared. You know, and because uh, that's the one thing we can control is mm-hmm. how prepared we are for something. Of course, things come you know out of the blue or catch us off guard, but there are things that we can control and we should do our best to control them, whether it's health, you know, diet, exercise, mm-hmm. uh, learning the lines before you go into the room, <laughs> you know. Little things, just, <laughs> just, a little just, thing. just little, little things, they add up <laughs> after a while, yeah. And I feel like, I guess, uh, as far as within my acting, I think when I was 17, Michael Mayer really helped me with simplicity mm. and really helped with like getting down to what is the simple thing and, and um, because I tend to overcomplicate things in general, so I think that also applies to life sometimes, you know. Yeah. So yeah. Keep it simple. Um, okay, that was a deep question. Here's another question. <laughs> do you have stage fright, and how do you deal with it? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Do you want? It's, I can. You go. You take that. <laughs> yeah. No. So I, I never did, and then, um, uh, like four years ago or so, I was doing. I used to have a really horrible panic disorder. So I've had lots of panic attacks on stage uh, during shows. Wow. N- um, actually, my, I did a, my solo cabaret that I wrote and did at 54 Below last year and a couple other places and have been do- is sort of about all of this. Uh, yeah, be- and now I would say I don't, I don't have it anymore. I don't panic anymore, um, but some of the symptoms that would trigger panic still occur when we're on stage. So it, it definitely gives me stage fright. Uh, and I think, so it's a whole bigger topic, but mm-hmm. um, but it was really interesting because I never ever had any until I was like, you know, 22, 23, and, and then have spent the last few years really working to overcome it. And doing this play was a big, was a big step in that direction. Mm-hmm. And I think it came to me at a moment when it was time because I hadn't really done a show in a few years Mm -hmm. um and then I think I sort of had like life opens up when you need it to sort of and it was like all right here's a chance to really go for it in a big way by doing a two-person play where you're on stage (laughs) you're on stage the entire time you have nowhere to hide you have nothing to hide behind and so I think every show it's you know we I work a little bit more towards 
being like free of it. That She's doing sense. great. Yeah, She's you're doing, doing great. Yeah, and some shows are great. Some shows I love every second, and then the other shows I'm like, uh, you know. But but I do the show and I do my job. And like I said, every so yeah, stage fight is is a real thing. <laughs> As yeah, our yeah. panic. What about you, Joshua? Uh, no, I don't I don't really get stage fright. I do. Uh, I like the excited the exciting nerves the nerves is like i can't wait to get out it's there the, yeah absolutely that's what i kind of that's the only reason i guess i do live theaters because that that before mm-hmm. and even the during you know uh, i don't care too much about the after but just that first that entrance you the know adrenaline. Going, just yes feeling the the energy of a new crowd every night is like oh here we go you know here we go and I, and it's about you know for me just finding ways to control that or use it to my advantage that night in, in whatever way possible I love this stuff though, you know. I love it, and um, and thankfully I have a, a brilliant like, and she shared this with me. What she just shared you with you. You saying that because the camera and is on? No, 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 <laughs> no, no. It's been no. on the whole time. Brilliant and confident <laughs> co-star because while she may have, deal, while she may deal with whatever she deals with nightly, she does not lack in confidence. <laughs> And mm. whether she, whether she, I don't know if she'll speak against that or not, but I know she doesn't. Are you trying to bring tears here? Because it's going to work. No, no, no. I'm just telling you what I know. And to, to the way she's had my back on that stage, you cannot have my back the way you had it unless you possess something inside that, that can, you know, that caters to that. So. You guys have really bonded, which is nice. Yeah, yeah we, we're, we're usually, yeah, yeah. we fight a lot more than we are in front of this camera yeah, yeah. right well, now. I'll start one eventually. <laughs> yeah, we got how many more minutes we got left? We can get a couple of arguments. What are you guys in. fighting about? We a ways. lot of things. Yeah. We are, we're, we're just, we're really different. Yeah. We have complete, we just sort of have very different perspectives on life. Yeah. Which, which, <laughs> which keeps is it interesting, great. You know? and, and then like in, re- in regards to the play is great because yeah. it, it's worked really well there. But as people, yeah, yeah we just. Uh, well, what have you learned from each other? Oh, a lot. I was thinking about that the other day. I was like kind of, kind of running down the list. And well, I guess one of the biggest things, cause, <laughs> um, and this was at Williamstown as well, just her attention to detail as a person you know, as first as a person first and then when it comes to the work i i have not I'm, I'm i'm attempting to embody that how much attention i pay to the to the specific details of something i'm more so of uh okay here's here's the the general thing i'm right. going to take that and try to rip it apart to get specifics but i feel like from her i've learned to look at this general thing <laughs> and pick out and see all the the variations and colors of it instead of just ripping it apart and then trying to do it that so way. So more meticulous. Approach. Yeah, yeah, a little oh. bit, a little bit. Mm-hmm. I, I, I love that. Yeah. Um, I've def. I think I want to make sure I like say this correctly. But in working with someone and being around, you know, in Williamstown, we were living in the same house and we were around yeah. each other so much. And being around someone who is sort of is different from you. Uh, but you're, you know, like to, I've, I think, I think I've gotten a little better at, you know, taking myself out of my own shoes and, and, and seeing, and then I, and, you know, realizing that I've definitely worked more on like having other people's opinions be just as valid as mine. Yeah. 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 (laughs) And then I would say, because I think the moon, we're We're still in that fight. No, we're not. We're not going into that. It's over. We got, we literally got in a fight about the moon once. No, we didn't. And we like to tell people. This is perplexing. I can't wait to hear the details. Um, But I, and then I will say in the, you know, he just as a person and then in his work, like he does see things much more positively than I do and that's been really great to be around and um it may not seem like I've taken much of that but I <laughs> but I have I know you take and so. um <laughs> yeah because like when when we're approached with with a really challenging moment like I kind of want to give up or I just get really uh, frustrated and he is like no I'm yeah. excited this is great this is great. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's so go. there's a lot of that there's a lot like before the show me being like I'm so tired mm-hmm. and him being like it's gonna be great mm-hmm. and I'm like well it may not be great but it, it won't be bad like you know it doesn't have to be bad Alexandra <laughs> <laughs> well it sounds like you're learning a lot from each other yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I think this perspective play and this in play general play makes yeah. there's no way to do a play like this with someone and not just learn be, just the discussions we had had to have in rehearsal yeah uh, w- learn how you know made me learn so much about 
what it's you know what it might be like to be him in the world and yeah. and vice versa. It, yeah, it's maybe more of a nurturer, you know, in in the sense that you know I I can come off as insensitive even though I care a lot about people, you know, but I've I've been I've learned more in the past few months that yeah I can come off as insensitive sometimes, and just this show, and uh, two of my the Alexandra and another young lady who I've worked with recently they've kind of helped me just mm-hmm. open up a little more as a person which is which is bigger than I guess anything artistically mm-hmm. that could happen you know which, which it feels good so mm-hmm. well ladies and gentlemen. If you haven't been convinced by now, then you should definitely go see Actually at MTC, <laughs> mm-hmm. which is yeah. playing through mm-hmm. when? Uh, December 10th. Yeah. December 10th. December so you don't have that 10th. much time. So Two more weeks. There. 16 yeah. more shows. That's plenty of time. You have yeah. 16 opportunities to come see us. Tickets range from 30 to $60, you yeah. know. Yeah. You know, They're selling it hard, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. No, really, we're really <laughs> proud of this. We've worked really hard on this play. Yeah. We want you to we see have. it. Yeah. So come see Actually and come back to Facebook Live tomorrow, and we will see you again. Bye-bye. See y'all later.